edition 19 of All Killer No Filler podcast with me, Rachel Fairburn, and Kerry Pritchard McLean. Just before we start, we'll do our usual disclaimer this isn't hero worship, uh, we're not encouraging you to go out and murder, uh, we just have a mutual interest, and as long as we're doing this podcast, it stops us from writing to them in prison. Episode, what are we? Let's get it right. This, this is week. definitely 19. Definitely 19. 100% 19. We were so confused with Zodiac last time. I think we God said it was like episode four or something. What was going we? on, yeah. So this one, episode 19, is The Bloody Benders. The Bloody Benders. <laughs> Which is uh, my dad's favourite serial killer, because that's what <laughs> I hear him shouting about them all the time. Dear, I'd, I've been giggling at the name, but now, I'm over it now. Yeah, and I'm someone, over you'll it. find out later on, someone else who ran like a search party for them was called like Leroy Dick or something. <laughs> So it's like, Dick was hard on the trail of the benders. <laughs> and it's just very hard to not turn it into a, yeah. a, a carry-on film. But um, we, and we won't do that. We've got it out of our system now, I think. <laughs> it's gone. So, the Bloody Benders were... <laughs> oh, God. The Bloody Benders were uh, allegedly the first serial killers in America. But fans of the podcast will know mm-hmm. that apparently that was H.H. H. Holmes. Yeah, I mean, they... Got there first, I think. Timeline wise, yeah. Timeline wise, but then again, it's America's first serial killer family. Oh, is it the fact that they go the first serial killers as opposed to first serial killer? Yeah. Is that is that what they're doing? Yeah. So depending on who, like wants when to... McDonald's say we make our burgers with 100 percent beef, but that's just the brand of the meat that they use. Yeah, it's it's a bit like it depends what documentary you're gonna watch to draw you in. I think. Ah, uh, okay. So the they did some stuff dead early on. They did do... Uh, well, it, is, it does go back, doesn't it? It's basically when America was um, still being formed. And when I say still being formed, I mean sti- <laughs> <laughs> killing Native American Indians and then stealing their land. And this is how uh, <clears throat> Benders ended up living in Labette County. Um, it's about 1871 when they moved there. And it was just after the Civil War. So what they did was there was a load of Native Indians living there, the Osage Indians, so... Naturally, the settlers went, can you just shift it to what's going to become Oklahoma? And can we have all this land? And can we build some houses on it? They said, yes, of course, uh, in a roundabout way. And then off they went and people bought land. The Benders bought some land there. They bought 160 acres. Yeah, which is quite quite a big farmstead. And it's on this really sort of bleak patch of almost deserty, scrubby land. Yeah, in Kansas, um, there's nothing there. No. Really and good. it was them, they're a family of spiritualists. I mean, family will come into question, and yeah. spiritualists will definitely come <laughs> into question, but they and five other spiritualist families sort of settled in this one patch, and it sort of started, not a town, because they were too far apart, but it was just a sort of a settlement. And when you consider in the Civil War, there were 700,000 men killed. Spiritualism was the thing to be in because there's a lot of grief-stricken relatives going oh can you tell me what happened to him absolutely have you got any money though just because ghosts can only hear through (laughs) money and then i think he was shot would probably have been the the outcome (laughs) of that (laughs) they bought this did i tell you i went to a psychic in blackpool and paid three quid oh no so i went to blackpool and i went to a psychic and it's when one of those like it's basically like a windbreak that you go behind. Oh, yeah. yeah. And they should have sat there with a crystal ball and a vape. This was years ago now, but I paid £3 for it. And I think she read my palm or did some such bullshit and was like, you'll end up with a man, <laughs> which, I mean, she's hedging her bets there. <laughs> um, you'll end up with a man and he'll have brown hair and blue eyes. Oh, okay. Which my partner does have, but also... Oh, my God, have you got a number? What? <laughs> she sounds like it's so Oh, it was amazing. It was amazing. <laughs> Um, and then she said that I'm going to be very powerful and rich and famous, which is exactly what I wanted to hear. Yeah, that's that's true. I once went to one. She obviously was shoved my shoulders if I had a spirit guide. I was like, you're freaking me out, woman. Then she told me a few things, a couple of which did come true, but I was that freaked out by the whole experience and ashamed of myself that I just threw the, the uh, recording in the bin when I got outside. Oh, yeah, they give you a tape, yeah. don't they? And they write everything down at the same time. Yeah. I didn't just throw the tape out. I ripped the like tape from the inside. Oh, really? Yeah, it was proper. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, why have I just done that? And um, Speaking of tapes, basically, I hope, she won't listen to this, but my mum had this tape of like Disney songs that she used to always play in the house. So it was like, when I hear an elephant <laughs> fart, whatever. And uh, she'd play it all the time, and I used to sort of steal it and listen to it and I did it and it chewed up and I was like oh god what do I do and I was so convinced that she would find it and bollock me because my parents are quite strict 
I took it out to the lake at our house. I pulled out some of the stuff from the inside, tied, a, tied it around a rock and threw it into the lake. I basically you disposed of I, I weighted its body and threw it into the lake. So somewhere in this 10 foot deep lake is a Disney tape from... In the early 80s. Did you feel relieved afterwards? I still think about it. It's like the telltale heart. I worry they're going to dredge it and she's going to be like, what's this? Find it round the rock. Throw it out. So that was my... I think that's called a dry run, isn't it? I think it is, yeah. <laughs> anyway. The benders. One room house. They had a house that they'd built. It was amazing. I was reading about how they built it. and it, So there's um, there was uh, two Johns, allegedly. So the dad and the son. Oh, sorry. I thought it meant two bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> and they built it just in a couple of days. They worked really, really... Apparently, they're very hard workers. And they would go... they travel like 80 miles to go and get the wood for it. And then they'd bring it back. And then when it was ready, they brought the two women there. So if nothing else, they've got mm. quite the work ethic. Which is... I think it rings bad. true. Because they were only there for two years and they killed 11 people. <laughs> they were very busy. It was one room, wasn't it? It, that yeah. they lived in with a wagon curtain across. I think you call that open plan don't you I think it is yeah open plan living <laughs> uh, they had a wagon curtain across and so it was set into different sections so one part was a shop this is so and, weird and yeah. then another part was the B&B type thing yeah and then another bit was like farm stuff wasn't it yeah there was different things going on so it's like that they basically decided to hang up this wagon cover halfway across this and it, obviously it was a house so it's quite big but mm-hmm. halfway across the room and then the, it's really weird. It's like they're, and they're like, now this is my shop. <laughs> um, and that, so you'll come in and you ask to buy something. And I'll be like, hello, this is my shop. It was really weird. And they sold, what is it? They sold dry goods. Dry goods. We can't find out what that is. But we were discussing this. Dry goods in America are things like linen, clothing, and things like that. And dry goods here are things like rice and right. pasta. So, so there was something close. It would have looked like a Hollister or yeah. like no light. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking wood and sawdust on the floor. Except no beautiful people hanging around. Although, Although Kate, Kate Bender. Yeah, Kate Bender looked like a Hollister a person. By all accounts. Um, so they had this wagon cover hanger. So the front would be a shop and then the back would be their living quarters. But at night they would sort of turn it into a and b so the shop would be where they fed people. And this wagon cover comes uh, comes into play because it's part of how they committed mm-hmm. their murders. It is. So in this house, there was just the benders living and then people that were going along the Osage Trail who were, who would stop off. It's called Bender Tavern as well, which I promise I won't laugh at. <laughs> um, so people were going along the trail, heading west uh, to, for a better life, really. So it was rough as well, this trail. There was highwaymen, there was... There was murderers. People well, were travelling with thousands of dollars worth of stuff because everyone take, took all their belongings heading towards uh, the West for a better life. So people would be travelling with like $3,000, which is like 50-odd grand in today's money, just trotting along on a, a pony. And then it's no wonder people were being killed left, right and centre. Yeah. No, I'm not saying I'd do that, but, you know. Yeah, so it was quite a dangerous area, wasn't it? Which is why when a lot of these bodies started turning up in a shoe with the same injuries that they were just like... That's the life on the trail. Yeah. (laughs) So there's four Benders that lived in this house. So John Bender Sr. is the dad. He was known as Pa Bender. He was in his 60s. He was also known as Old Beetle Brow John, (laughs) which is incredible. It sounds like he should make his own... uh, like salad dressing. Yeah, chutneys and stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and he's like, like beetle brow John chutney you've got there. It's delicious. <laughs> That's 15 quid a pot, that. It's not a dry good, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but he was meant to be very imposing, sort of bushy eyebrows, very beardy. He's sort of described as gorilla like, mm-hmm. well over six foot, which is tall nowadays. Let I'll be alone honest, then. it sounds like exactly the kind of man that I go for, which is dreadful. Yeah, he does, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah, terrible like, English. Barely spoke English. <laughs> Huge man. <laughs> he was meant to be German, but apparently his voice was so guttural, is the word that keeps being used, that no one could decide if he actually was German. The only English he spoke was swear words, <laughs> which again sounds like my ideal man. Um, and his real name was allegedly John Flickinger. All of them have about a billion different yeah. names, so just try and keep track of them. So Marbender, who was 50-odd, nobody knows the exact age. Very miserable, again, a big woman, not very attractive. Well, she was known locally as the she-devil. Yeah. And it, I mean, it's very rare that a woman gets called <laughs> a she-devil, and it's like, she was petite with big blue eyes. <laughs> Yeah, she wasn't very friendly. Uh, again, terrible English by all accounts. She'd been married before, mm. and the rumour is... Several times. Yeah, that she'd killed all her husbands and her children from those marriages because they witnessed her kill her husbands. Which, 
I don't know. Well, if you're going to call someone she devil, you may as well go the whole hog. Yeah. And She's got saggy tits as yeah. well. <laughs> um, so she, first of all, she went out with this guy, or she married this guy called George Griffiths. They had 12 kids together. Ooh. I bet saggy tits is the least yeah. of her worries, isn't it? <laughs> and, and after that, she was married several times and all her husbands would die mysteriously of head injuries. And then, like you say, the kids were being apparently popped off because they'd witnessed stuff. Kate, I will talk about now, was her fifth child. Mm-hmm. Um, now, Kate Bender, also known as Eliza Griffiths, also known as Sarah, Sarah Ellis Davis. They've all got a million names. Yeah. Like, Mar Bender was Elmira, Elvira. Yeah. It's sort of, like, it's so hard to keep up with. It's like when uh, Trigger calls Rodney Dave. Yeah. It's like no one's got a real name. It gets quite complicated, so it's best that we just stick to Mar Kate, Kate and John. John. Yeah. So, Kate Bender is the interesting one. She's 23. Um, at this time, she's meant to be very unlike her mum, who like barely said she didn't speak any English, only spoke some weird guttural German. She spoke with very little accent. She spoke like beautiful English, was very attractive in as... comparison to the other members of the family. Yeah, <laughs> but if anyone's gonna look at it, next to She Devil and Beetle Brows, yeah. aren't they? I think that's like how people always have me as a bridesmaid, <laughs> so they can really shine on their big day. I've been about eight people's bridesmaids, and I know what it is. Um, but Kate was meant to have special powers as well as being hot and mm-hmm. uh, quite smart. She claimed that she was a healer and a spiritualist. She used to give lectures. Um, she used to hand out flyers claiming that she had supernatural powers. I've seen less disingenuous things on a flyer, yeah, to exactly. be honest. Hand out heard... flyers claiming to be funny. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As heard on Radio 4. <laughs> on a phone in. <laughs> she was the one that brought people to the tavern. Yes, because she was quite, well, from the sound of it, quite outgoing. Yeah. Vivacious and attractive. And uh, apparently she she was a prostitute as well. And I say good for her, because it's nice to see the prostitutes dishing it out for once, rather than receiving it. Oh yeah, you're yeah, right. Well, you're right. Sort of good, good for her. <laughs> Very empowered young woman. Yeah. Um, and then we get to John Bender Jr. Who, <laughs> yeah. Who's also, in, are you still laughing at Bender? No, I'm laughing <laughs> at John Bender when we get to him, because he's... So his name is John Gerberhart... Is, is one of his names as well, but he was known... For the purposes of this, he's going to be John Bender Jr. So he was about 25, a little bit older than Kate. Meant to be very handsome. Mm. Now, they always follow this up by going, very handsome man, he had a huge auburn moustache. <laughs> which are three words you don't usually hear following the word handsome. No. Now, he was alleged to be Kate's brother, but everyone's like, well, they sure do kiss on the mouth a lot for brother and sister. <laughs> So it, the rumour is that they were actually husband and wife posing as brother and sister. But in those times, on the prairie like that, it's so desolate. Yeah, well, the white stripes have done it, haven't it? Yeah, not... it's, you probably <laughs> That's fit. Cool. You may as well. <laughs> You're not going to live that long. When it's when it's 95 miles to the next farm, <laughs> and they could be all daughters, you take what you get, don't It's you? 95 miles to the next penis. <laughs> I'm just going to have to take this one. And that's a severed one lying in an old yeah. dry riverbed. <laughs> It's very weird because they talk about Kate being like very attractive, very captivating, very smart, and then they're like, and but she was having a sexual, she was fucking her brother mm. who had a big ginger moustache and also everyone said was retarded. Yeah, but they he just used to burst into laughing fits, didn't it? Yeah, and just sort of which. But he's probably going. I can't believe I'm getting to boff this fit my <laughs> fit sister with his big ginger and, tash and kill all these people. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> you think? I mean, like the worst thing. I mean. When you think about madness, bursting into fits of laughter isn't really the most no. terrible. Well, I think they, they said he was a half-wit, so he used to just sort of giggle inanely at everything he said. But he was meant to be quite handsome. And I, I've had a similar thing. A guy from back home, very beautiful, that he used to have sort of a, an arrangement with. <laughs> but he spoke like this, which is like the most unattractive thing in the world. So when we met up, I'd be like, shh, no names. <laughs> <laughs> like be like, let's do, let's do a sexy role play where you don't say anything. His voice sounds like something somebody trying to do an impression of an action hero. <laughs> I'm not being very good at it. No, he was like so stupid, it's unbelievable. Um, well, he he, he had an MA, but I mean, uh, fuck. Did you ever even say he had MA? I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna have to cut that out. <laughs> No, no, he had qualifications, just not in his mouth. <laughs> Throwing, getting distracted. So that that's the family. So that's um, Ma, Pa, John and Kate, who yeah. possibly boffin, possibly related, possibly not. Then, in May 1871, a body turns up. This is a chap called Jones who was found with a crushed skull, a 
cutthroat and discovered in Drum Creek. Now, the Benders weren't blamed for this. It was a lo another local tavern owner was blamed, but nothing was proven, so they were just were like, oh, well, that's life on the trail. Yeah, just and they had all it. these weird sort of vigilantes knocking around the trail at the time who would accuse guys of murder. They'd have to pay to get them off, and then nothing would ever happen. Or mm. they would murder the guys themselves. and they, they would basically accuse a wealthy landowner of murdering, and they'd be like, prove that you didn't do it. And you're like, I can't prove anything. Like, I'm here on my own in the middle of Bumblefoot nowhere. <laughs> my wife was with me. Yeah, well, she would lie. And then they'd just take their homes and stuff. So there was, you know, vigilantes. It's not like it's not like law enforcers to be uh, corrupt, is it? No, this is it. It's, it must have been a horrible time to live, though. Oh, it, it sounds utterly shit. So the reason why they think this is a bender uh, murder <laughs> is because... Oh, come on, Kieran. Um, is... <laughs> <laughs> but it shows all the signs of um, their attack. So crushed skull, it struck with a hammer, they believe, and then a cut throat. That was their MO. Yep. So this body turns up in May 1871, and then there's a few more murders that where the bodies are dumped out. Yeah, so February 1872, two more men with the same injuries. And then in 1873, there were so many people vanishing from the Assage Trail that people were starting to avoid it. Yeah. So word was getting around that it was quite dangerous and... People were setting off and not coming back and not getting to where they're meant to be going to. So everyone was a bit like, oh. That's so weird as well, because at that time, like, say uh, I set off to go to whatever, Oklahoma or somewhere. I don't even, I don't know the geography of it. Um, and that's going to take me three weeks. Mm -hmm. So then a three weeks time. So in four weeks time, you go, bloody hell, I would have thought Kiri would have been touched yeah. by now. Then you send a telegram. That's going to take, what, fucking eight days? Yeah, it's going to And then, so, like, all this stuff, like, a year later, you'd be like, I'm pretty sure they did go missing. It's not like a cat where you just, you know, oh, it'll turn up in about six weeks. Yeah. So how they kept, they're definitely, what I'm trying to say in a very roundabout way is there was definitely more that went missing. Yeah. That they couldn't possibly keep track of. Because what about those people without families that set off to go and then yeah. got... And, and just got... got got murdered on the Oft. way or just but by this point because there's so many people vanishing and words getting around they naturally of course they are they're saying it's those bloody Indians isn't it yeah they're kicking off on the trail coming over here to <laughs> where their their native homes <laughs> <laughs> and smashing some skulls so everyone sort of just like today when horrible things happen people blame the Indians yeah. <laughs> um, that basically it was sort of left to it for a while and they're like well that's what happens when you mix with savages yeah this is it and uh as, as we know, it probably well, it wasn't the Indians because they'd been bloody moved on anyway. Yeah, and it took, for this to happen, for the benders to get caught up with, it took, as it does with anything, a rich person to go missing and then everyone yeah. went, well, this is a real tragedy. And it got, the way this happens, it's quite a strange way because it's like somebody goes missing and someone goes looking for them then that person goes missing. So winter 1872, there's no definite dates. Everyone's just like, it was winter <laughs> 1872. Uh, George Newton Longcore and his infant daughter, Mary Ann, they left a place called Independence in Kansas and they were going to resettle in Iowa. So they set off along the Osage Trail. They were never seen again. 1873, Longcore, his, his neighbour, Longcore's neighbour, who was a Dr William Henry York, decides to go looking for them. Now, bear That's in very neighbourly, isn't it? It's very neighbourly. Mine won't even turn his music down on a <laughs> Saturday night. Well, I'm just looking at 18, winter 1872, and then 1873, William Henry York goes, I'd oh, better go on, take your sweet time, mate. Yeah. That's a bit like uh, he's owed some holiday anyway. Yeah. And he's like, well, I've got to go down there. I'll tell you what, I'm going to do something noble. I'm going to look for him and his, his kid. He starts questioning people along the trail. Told people, Henry York, William Henry York said, look... I will be back on the 9th of March. Or I will be where, yeah, I'll come back, return on the 9th of March. And he never returned. So then his brother, who was another well-to-do gentleman, mm -hmm. Colonel Edward York, Ed, Ed York, as he likes to uh, call himself. He had an, there was two brothers, actually, very well-to-do. Alexander York as well, who was a member of Senate. So Colonel Edward York says, right, that's it, something's going on. I'm going to go and find my brother. So he sets off along the trail, starts questioning people. And uh, he actually met the Benders. Mm. He spoke to them and they eventually admitted that his brother had been there. Yeah. Eventually. And also the fact that um, Ed Edward York saw his brother's saddle, or his brother's horse's saddle. His brother's saddle makes it sound a bit weird. <laughs> his brother's horse's saddle was outside on the fence as well. 
So he yeah. decided not to say anything and thought, are oh, these people are up to something? And the bender said, oh, it was oh, it was Indians what did it. It was Indians. I don't know why they've got a Rochdale accent. <laughs> I think we all know why, though, don't we? <laughs> For years, these bodies have been turning up with crushed skulls, cutthroats, mm-hmm. and everyone's just going, oh, it must be the Indians, and oh, it's just a bit dangerous. And they're all happening around this family's home, and everyone's just sort of ignoring it. People get, you know, there's all sorts of rumours have started about this Bender Tavern as well that people have been threatened while Mm -hmm. they've been there and everyone just ignores it until a rich person goes missing it's like when a like no one gives a shit about a missing kid unless they're white in this country (laughs) so everyone springs into action Ed York is questioning them now he left the Bender's house and was like there's something not right with that and then he's questioning more people and they said well this woman came down to town she was basically fleeing the Bender's home because Ma Bender had threatened her with a knife and so the woman who just run, she just run out for it must have been absolutely miles. Mm. I also like when all this is going on and they're all it makes me really sad. So this woman has gone to like she's got no toothpaste, she's got no deodorant. <laughs> she goes there's the two no things, TV. Yeah. <laughs> there's things I can't get my head around, right? She goes and she stays it pays probably a lot of money to stay in this shitty one bedroom house. She gets threatened with a knife, she runs away. And she survives. That's amazing, right? She's definitely dead now. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I can say that categorically, right? 100%. (laughs) But also, like, what was she running to? Her life must have been so fucking shit. She stunk. (sighs) She would have worked really hard. The days were long. Like, it would have been just endless... I, like if someone came at me with a knife I'd be like oh thank god <laughs> finally the coward's way out <laughs> delicious thank you like I would fucking love for someone to kill me if I was living in the 17th century oh, or whatever no 19th century 19th century well I always think like as well what, what if it was the little things like, what if you're so used to it you think Maybe she's running away going, oh, God, I don't want to die. What if I never get typhoid? <laughs> what, if I, what if I never get gang raped by, like, a, a, a bunch of gold diggers and stuff? Like, what? Oh, I can't go to my grave having never had my father cut my own hair off with a hand knife. <laughs> so, you know, it's different. That's very specific, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> Have you been regressed? <laughs> I was Cleopatra, like every other fucker. What a miserable, miserable time to live. And, like, travelling west through this trail and just... Oh, it's so depressing. In fact, when you see pictures of like the, the wagons and that going west, it just looks... Everyone's just... The black and white pictures, everyone's just staring yeah. in the space, like... Waiting for TV doing? to be invented. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, when and will t- pop music come along? <laughs> <laughs> um, Dr. Quinn, medicine woman, glosses over a lot of shit. <laughs> Um, so York kept asking questions. Um, he went back to the Bender's house, knowing that they'd sort of kept this from him. So he, he was interrogating Kate and John, and well, because Ma had said, "Me not speak English," <laughs> yeah. and had said, and then he kept going, "Where is my brother? I know he was here. I was seeing the saddle." Then Ma flips out, can suddenly understand English. This is amazing, right? This. She's suddenly up fluent, chatting away. <laughs> it just remind, I used to work with this woman who was Spanish. Very nice woman, but she would pretend. This can sound awful. She would pretend that she couldn't understand what you were saying. Can you uh, can you can you help us out with this? <laughs> and then it'd be like <laughs> so racist. I know it sounds terrible, little impression. But, but this is true. This is exactly how she sounded. And then one of the bosses would come in and they'd go. Juanita, please can you come and help me with this really important project thing? See, si, yes, I speak wonderful English. Good day, madam. I... <laughs> she sounds exactly like Manuel. I speak very good English. I learned it from a book. I'm not kidding you, though. She would go to like, well, yes, of course, I shall assist you this afternoon. I shall be there at 12. And you'd be like, oh, right, so... Me? Is it, if you were important enough... She could, she was like, yeah, I know what I'm doing. Are you saying she killed a load of people she killed in the 19th people. century? In the 19th century. I'm going to help what I've just said. If she ever listens to this podcast, because she will do, because she understands the language fully. <laughs> anyway, don't bother writing in. Writing in? <laughs> like we're in the broom cupboard. <laughs> Look, I mean, <laughs> I've got into the atmosphere of Osage. Send trail. us a telegram if you want to make a complaint. <laughs> or a smoke so. signal. <laughs> So, York came back and started asking questions. Ma flipped out, could suddenly understand yeah. English, and she went, well, you know why I chased her off with a knife? It's because she put a curse on my coffee, which is the most fever dream, panicked, 
the next time and they're like, well, Kerry, what are you doing? And they put a cur- curse on my uh, coffee. Yeah. My coffee. I curse your coffee. <laughs> so now Ed York is like, there's really something going on with his family. He was with a group of like 75 people. He brought a company of 75 to help search for his brother. And, and they were like, it's definitely the Benders. And Kate had also said by this point to him, Tell you what, come back next Friday and I'll use my clairvoyant, clairvoyant abilities to find your brother. What a weird why, thing to How say. do we do it now? <laughs> like, why why is Friday wait? special? Yeah. Gonna have a chippy tea yeah. and then I'm ready to do my clairvoyancy. York and his company, they, they, his company were like, just hang them, it's definitely them. They were conv- uh, convinced that it was the Benders and the family that lived the, on the next farm called the Roaches. Ugh. I don't know what it is about horrible names. <laughs> Bender and Roach. <laughs> oh, God, that's awful. They wanted to sort of just hang them and get it over and done with. They were like, it's definitely them. Ed York, God love him, was like, no, we need to have evidence. We need to do this in the proper way. So it seemed like quite a moral man. Mm. So what happens is so many people are going missing. A few weeks later, no one's in any hurry to do anything no. about this. Everything's <laughs> like, three weeks later, we decided to have a meeting. They, did, they hadn't invented time by that point. Did you not know? <laughs> Mind you, I've had a bag to go to the charity shop that's been sat in my uh, that's been sat in my hallway since September. So I mean, I'd be in no hurry either. Is it gonna be one of those bags that when they get it, they go, "Oh, vintage"? <laughs> <laughs> no, they go, "Oh, good, we need some more um, glass pots from Goo Puddings. <laughs> we don't take videos." <laughs> so a few weeks later, Osage County sort of had a massive meeting which John and Pa went to. Apparently there was about 75 people there, which is probably all the people in the whole county. Bold move by John and Pa there. Yeah, look at that. Like, can you imagine them Gotta just... show your face. Oh, sweating, yeah. sat there like... <laughs> Bloody hell, they don't ask too many questions. And John's like, don't worry, I'm going to pretend I can't speak English as well. <laughs> um, so they sent the halfwit and, and the guy who can't understand yeah. English. So they were like... I don't know what's going on. <laughs> they decided that they were going to send. They were going to search the, all the houses in that area to find evidence. A few days after this, obviously no one's in any great hurry to get this going. A guy called Billy Toll went past the Bender farm. He noticed that the animals looked emaciated, mm. were you know cooped up, that the home seemed empty. So they decided they were going to search all the homes. So a few days later, no one's in any fucking great well, hurry to do anything. there was a big storm, wasn't there? Yeah, yeah but maybe. before the big storm, so Billy Toll went past the Bender farm. All the animals were sort of starving outside um, and the house looked empty. And he goes, right, guys, I think the Benders have fled. Then there was a bad storm, so they're like, well, there's been a storm, we can't do anything. So another three days goes by, and then they said, right, we need some volunteers. Now, there were 75 people at the original meeting, but they said, we need volunteers because we think the benders have killed some people and we need people to go and search the house. 200 people turned up to isn't, rubberneck. Isn't it amazing, isn't it? Can someone help me with something? Oh, no, we, it's really dangerous, that trail, we're really busy. Oh, murders, you say? Oh, you might see some corpses. Oh, count me in. I've seen shit like this. There'll be loads of people standing around the sides doing fuck all with their arms folded going, it's brilliant when the community comes together, <laughs> isn't it? Doing nothing. Just like, watching, having a sing. Yeah, like there was a woman on our road. that Rachel and I live near a dog home that unfortunately someone set a fire to and a lot of dogs died. It was yes. really, really sad. It was horrible. Um, and nothing to do with me. <laughs> and uh, I remember when, when it happened there was a woman who lives about four doors up in our street who went it's amazing isn't it because what happened was loads of, basically it was on all the news and they raised a million pounds mm-hmm. for this dog home it got rebuilt so although it was a terrible horrible tragedy something good has come out of it because the British public donated loads she goes oh isn't it amazing what we've done around here you know people think people from Harper Hay are a bit rough but at the end of the day we put our hands in our pockets and we found a million pounds for that dog home which they didn't no one from Harper Hay has fucking donated it we're, she said we're very generous people and if I find that kid I'm going to cut his fucking head off <laughs> so when they just said that they need ice is <laughs> over it <laughs> So when they said that they needed volunteers, fucking hundreds of people rocked up and went, oh, I love a murder, me. We might get to hurt someone. This is exciting. <laughs> so they arrived and they were led by a guy called Leroy Dick. I'm not even making it up. So Leroy Dick went off to fucking search the Benders' home. So they got there and they found that all the possessions had been taken, hadn't they? Everything was gone. Yeah. And it stank. It stunk. Yeah. So they went in there and they're like, God, this trap door that's been nailed down really <laughs> smells. So they decided to lift it up and as soon as they opened it, this foul smell came up. 
and apparently the floor of the cellar, which is underneath the home, was just sort of was just clotted with blood, Blech. which just put me right off scones. Sent me worst. <laughs> so basically, they had like a black pudding factory in the, in the cellar. Do you know what I can? I can smell it. Every time I, t- I read about this bit, the smell that I conjure up from my memory is when, when I was in Edinburgh, in Stockbridge, there was a butcher shop, and everyone said it was a really good butcher shop, but it had, like, taxidermy in it as well. What? And I was like, I'm not going in there. And every time I walked past, the smell of meat, and as well from the back of the thing, because I was staying next to it, we used to walk up the street going, <laughs> <laughs> And I just, all I could think about was, like, Ed Gein and, and various other things as I walked past, because it stank so bad. So That would be the perfect place, though, wouldn't it? Because there's going to be oh. loads of blood, and there's going to be a smell. Oh, it was disgusting. You would Sweeney Todd it, wouldn't you? Oof. Taxidermy, though. Don't yeah. Because also, meat. yeah, fur, it attracts a lot of dust, taxidermy. Yeah. Rotten. Anyway, back to the benders. <laughs> back to the benders. <laughs> so they started to dig up the cellar, but they found no bodies down there. So they just found all this blood. They they then were like, right, we need to get a better look at this. So the 200 people finally did something. They lifted, <laughs> physically lifted the house up and moved it to the side, which is so mad that you can even do that. Like, it's a fucking static caravan. Come on, shift it over. Let's or maybe it's one of those things that like, they were so angry, Ed York did on his own. You know, like when dads get their kids trapped under a car and they get super, <laughs> superhuman strength. They're like... Ugh! Just from the sheer panic of the situation. <laughs> Shit! And if they couldn't move a house that easily, why didn't the benders do it? Why didn't they kill someone and then just move it two inches to the left? And then your house wouldn't smell of old blood all the time. Who's staying over at no. that house? Who's buying their dry goods when it smells like a oh, black pudding? I just imagine that everything stank in those days. And it was just different levels of stink. Yeah, I suppose you have to deal with the smell of the teeth in your own head first, yeah, don't you? Yeah, there's a smell of you. There's a smell of your loved ones. There's a smell of animals. I know how bad it is if you buy a vintage dress, how like they they can smell of sweat because deodorant wasn't very good in like the seventies. Fuck knows what they like, you know, like oh, if you want to get rid of, if you want to stop smelling, then rub a rock under your armpits on a Tuesday when the moon's high or whatever. Which is what Lush told me to do now, actually. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so they moved the house aside, and then what happened was one of the York brothers was sat on his horse, and he saw um, a depression in the ground and was like. I wonder what that is. Because outside of the um, the farm, they had an orchard and they had mm-hmm. a vegetable patch. So they got these metal rods, very sophisticated, mm-hmm. and they started poking around in the veg patch mm-hmm. to find earth that had been disturbed. And the first thing they found was a hole with Dr. William mm-hmm. York in it. Unfortunately, it was the first body found. It's very weird. He was buried, like, head down, wasn't he? Like a golf tee. So they just dug a deep hole and dropped him in head first because his feet were only just buried... I think that's like more... I don't know why. I find that more offensive to be buried like that. It's a very uh, Fred West way of doing things, that. Yeah. Just, chuck, just dig it as much as you need, chuck it in, that'll Yeah, do. like whack-a-mole. Yeah. Yeah, it's horrible, isn't it? Yeah, something about burying people like that, I find a bit... Um, oh, well, that's a bit far, isn't it? <laughs> um, very disrespectful. So they got these um, these uh, metal rods, started probing and until about midnight. So they, they were probing losing till them. midnight. Probing till midnight. <laughs> the benders and the dicks. Um, good God. Um, they found what they thought was nine more graves. So they worked till yeah. about midnight, lost the light, stayed over. And then in the morning got up. They found in the end, was it nine, nine bodies and eight graves and body parts. Body parts. Now you see, this is what... I found interesting, the benders, like, they didn't dispose of the bodies very well, but they were selling food to travellers. Why didn't they just chop a few bodies up, stick it in a pan, give them some food? Well, I think you might be right there, because they did find body parts, and they found them in the well. Now, they said they must have been thrown in there as they were leaving, which means they must have had them in the house, because you wouldn't contaminate your water source. No, that's So true. why were they keeping bits of body parts if not to cook? Yeah, they must have been, must I think. They, why wouldn't they? I mean, you may as well. Y- yeah, you or, yeah, you may as well. And also, it's not like they're like, oh no, I won't eat someone, or I won't fit... It's not like they're shown to be greatly moral no, people not, so far. No, I so, I think they probably did. All the Germans body- as well, they fucking love cannibalism. Oh, they, they do actually, yeah. Yeah, big in Germany. Not all of them, obviously. Some of them. Uh, all of the Germans. David Hasselhoff and cannibalism, <laughs> huge in Germany. Um, all the bodies they found had the same injuries apart from one of them. Uh, so they had the classic head smashed skull in. Skull bashed in, cut throat. Uh, the only one that didn't have these injuries was a, a kid, a small child. 
who we, they think was the daughter of the one that went missing that yeah. William York went to look for. Yeah. Oh, we don't know how old she is, do no. we? No. Some, some of them... say 18 months and some say 8 years. Yeah. That's, a she big was difference. very mature. Yeah. Well, does she have tits? <laughs> well, she must be 8 then. <laughs> um, she's starting to bud. She's 8 oh, years old. Oh, God. <laughs> that is so horrible. <laughs> horrible, isn't it? <laughs> Never heard that before. I mean, no, I've not that really, but I think I might have made so it up. So disgusting. <laughs> Again, <She's laughs> But <laughs> oh my god, that's made me feel ill. So write in if you've ever been uh, accused of budding when you were young. Send us a uh, telegram. Oh, but this will wipe the smile off your face. The poor kid was buried, they think, alive because she had dirt under her nails, like she'd been scratching. Yeah, everything. they they say they think that she was buried under the body of her father, which is horrendous. Ooh. And that yeah, they think that she was buried alive or strangled. So I mean, like. Both are fucking terrible, but let's hope that she was strangled yeah. and, and was was dead before she was thrown under her father's dead body. So this gave um, it gave the police police they weren't in exist. It gave the vigilantes the <laughs> the method of murder from finding these bodies. So they decided what was happening was the benders were oh they so from yeah, this they pieced together, they pieced it what, all together what they did. So what they think was happening. Lots of speculation around this, isn't there? Yeah, and it's a bit like, well, how do you know? Yeah, because some of them they're like, there was one time when they killed a person, and um, when they were doing it, singing the hokey cokey. Yeah, and it's like, how have you got any proof of there's that? There's no way you could know after this stuff. So what they think happened was Kate Bender would be very... They they noticed somebody on the trail or in the neighbourhood who was well-dressed and looked quite well-to-do. They'd invite them to the tavern, they'd come and stay. Pa Bender would hide behind the wagon curtain with a hammer. Kate would talk to them, find out a bit more about them. John would be sat there giggling. He'd be giggling, yeah, and Ma would be pretending she didn't know what was going on. (laughs) And Kate would give a signal to the dad and he would hit them with the hammer, knock them unconscious, and then she'd cut their throat and then they'd... One of the women would cut their throats, Yeah. yeah. And then they chuck them down the trap door. But there's, there's a one of the documentaries says that. See, this is not. It's like, how would you ever know? One documentary says, oh, Kate noticed this man around town, brought him back to the the house, gave him some food. They killed him, and when they realised that he didn't have any money, because he didn't have any money, even though he was well dressed, they were infuriated. Oh, well, really? Well, how would you know? Because they're not telling you. Yeah, that is weird, isn't it? There's a lot of bullshit with this yeah, one because loads. it was a while ago. Although we were asked to do this one because it was. A historic historical one. yeah someone said we really like the podcast but can you do an older one because it's just a bit too brutal when yeah. it was like in the 80s I find the passage of time really <laughs> numbs the, uh, the horror of everything they found in the uh, cabin walls they found bullet holes so they think that with some people they would have been hit by the hammer and they, they attempted to fight back but uh, would ultimately so be overpowered th- that's another thing I'm not convinced about because if you think a lot of these people that would have been at the tavern would have been men that were travelling the trail and would have been... They've travelled all the way through things and they quite, they've managed to get through a really dangerous thing, like the trail, and they've got to the benders. Why, again, why wouldn't they just take the gun off them as well? Well, this, you know what? There's not to say that they didn't because back then it's not like they had ballistics experts who could be like, well, you can clearly see from this yeah, know, that's true. sign on the skull. They just would have seen a, a fucked up skull, which is what you'd have if you shot yeah, someone that's, at that's point a good point. In the midst of all this... Who's, who is this guy? He was just was he, he was a friend of the Benders. <laughs> of <laughs> Dorothy. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, yeah. Sorry, we're not homophobes. It's we just know. really hard. We, we know our friends of all denominations. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's. It's, it's really. You won't let some of them in the house, but no, of course not. <laughs> a lot of gay friends listen to this podcast. They won't be listening to it anymore. This, this chap. They they start. They go. Oh well, he knows him. The, he must be involved. And he's. <laughs> They go to hang him, but they ha- only hang him a little bit and then let him down. Yeah, they basically they hang him up till he, 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 uh, till he passes out, <laughs> then question him as he's coming round, and then they did it again till he passes out, and then they questioned him. He didn't know anything, he was just a mate of theirs. Then they hung him again till he passed out, and then they went, all right, you can go. And then the accounts at the time were like, and he staggered away home, uh, crying and staggering as if he had uh, drunk many an ale. And it's like, you've he's given him brain damage. He's got brain damage. He doesn't. He didn't know anything before, and doesn't know anything since. Now, poor man. So he's got brain damage. The benders have gone missing. What they did was, um, they managed though. They obviously escaped. They found an abandoned wagon with starving horses. Can you just feed your pets, please? <laughs> it was twelve miles north of the Bender Inn. 
and uh, it was their wagon. Uh, someone recognised it. And what they think's happened, they, there was confirmation that the family had bought tickets for a train uh, to Thayer, in, in a town called Thayer, to go to a place called Humboldt. Apparently John Jr. and Kate left the train and went to Texas. How do they know that they bought train tickets? I don't understand that, because it's not like there's CCTV or like, oh, well, the email address they left was bloodybenders at yeah. gmail.com. Because that's like... There's, again, there's no way you could... No. I mean, I, whenever I book trains through Virgin, they always ask me what I'm doing and where I'm going. <laughs> I tell that box that goes, none of your fucking business. <laughs> I think the box says, because they're like, what are you in town for? Um, and it's like, you know, you can book like visiting friends or a day out. And one of them is, that's for me to know. Which is what I always, <laughs> I, I always click that before I go and put a rock around a tape and throw it into a lake. <laughs> You're just stood at the side of the Thames, <laughs> staring into just it. tapes floating on the surface. So they, they apparently bought these tickets for the train. Again, nobody knows this. But the, the really good thing about this is, and I quite, quite like this, it, John Jr. and Kate apparently got off at Texas and travelled to an outlaw co- colony between Texas and New Mexico. Yeah, I didn't know what this was. <laughs> I looked it up. So an outlaw colony is literally where a load of outlaws go and live together and I bet it's like because they don't want to rob each other because everyone there is fucking hard as nails it's like a self-enforced prison and apparently they're too dangerous for law enforcement people to go to so they're just left to their own devices and so what they'll do is they'll they'll live there and then they'll travel out in the day and then go and rob people on the trail and stuff but because they do that all the day de- in the day I bet it's lovely like morning yeah. <laughs> like because they're not going to rob each other are they because they're all fucking scary bastards so that's where John and Kate went to live and they were just left to to it apparently a detective traced them sort of like a few years later because the benders were big almost like celebrities because mm-hmm. of them being these first it was a huge serial killers. story wasn't it yeah huge. like about 15 years later a detective tra- traced them to this uh, this place which is on the border of um, texas and mexico new mexico yeah. yeah texas and new mexico yeah one of them john had actually died of apoplexy <laughs> which is the most glamorous way of saying a stroke yeah. I've ever heard. Now, Ma and Pa, they didn't go to this town in Texas. They went to Kansas. They got the train to Kansas City and then changed and went to St. Louis in Missouri. Now, there's loads of stories about what actually happened. Mm-hmm. So that is what they think happened. So, but there's one story, because there was a reward, wasn't there? Yeah, there was $3,000 reward, which was put up by Colonel Ed. Yeah. I think his brother as well. So the two brothers. I was going to say, because so far, the other brother's really sat on his ass for yeah, this. Yeah, he's just throwing money at it. Yeah. <laughs> so, I've, got, I've got a cousin like that. So it's a $3,000 reward, which the equivalent to, in today's money is $59,000. Some vigilantes, this is where I'm dubious about this, vigilantes claim they'd shot, and, shot, shot, the, um, shot Martin Parr and John and burned Kate. I don't know why they've done that. No. Just so they could look at her for a bit longer. Look at those beautiful <laughs> eyes as they drip onto her cheeks. I mean, it's like I asked her out once and she said, no, just burn her. <laughs> Slog. Yeah. <laughs> so, th- this, I'm not sure about that because no. that amount wouldn't of Wouldn't you get the reward? Yeah, you'd get the reward. You'd keep a head or something, wouldn't There's you? There's no proof, so. There was a 50-year search, though. Yeah, and well, it... another one said that they lynched them all and they're like, brilliant, you caught them. And like, yeah, but we, then we threw them into the river. No, you didn't. You didn't throw $60,000 yeah. into a river. And then another one says, um, we shot them and then we buried them, but we can't remember where we buried them. Can we have the money, please? No, absolutely not. I tied her around a rock and I threw her into the lake. <laughs> <laughs> it got to the point, though, where women travelling together, for example, just like a mother and daughter along this trail, got accused of being Kate and Ma, and Ma Bender. Ooh, Jesus Christ. They never accused two blokes, you know, bloke on his own, rather, because John was dead by this point, of being John Senior, did they? No. Like, are you John Bender? So much, women have to put up with so much shit. Like, for hundreds of years, they'd be accused, two women travelling on their own, like, oh, are you the Benders? And then it was like, are you Thelma and Louise? <laughs> like, women just can't stop taking shit, can they? Or maybe it was a compliment, like, are you Kate Bender? Well, thank you, sir. <laughs> That's definitely Ma there, <laughs> old she-devil. They think that in 1880, Four Park committed suicide in Lake Michigan. That's sort of what they've got on record. Whatever his name is, John Parr, Bender Jr., Gerber Hart, whatever. <laughs> and then there's another theory that in October... This isn't the most batshit theory either. There's a great one coming up. In October 31st, um, they always write that down. If it's Halloween, they always agree yeah. the date. Um, 1889, Almira Moore, which is one of Ma's real names, and Eliza Davis, which is Kate, were arrested in Michigan. So they were going under those names. 
Um, a witness identified them as the benders, and Kate signed an affidavit saying that that other woman was Ma Bender. Now, they were sent to Kansas for trial, and then Kansas were like, it's really, uh, we can't trial them at the moment, it's really expensive to keep them, because there's, there was only one tavern, and it was the Bender's one, <laughs> so it's really expensive. So they just let these two women go. They think they caught Ma and Kate Bender, and they just let them go because they couldn't afford to keep them in boarding to wait wow. for a trial. How fucked up's that? Now, my favourite theory about what happened to them is, <laughs> apparently... Pa Bender used to work making hot air balloons okay. and ships. And one day there was this ship. I can't, I can't find the name of it. It was on another podcast I heard this. But it was on a big um, sailing vessel. And all of a sudden there was a storm. But through the clouds came a hot air balloon with all four benders in it. And then it <laughs> crashed on the deck of the ship. This is like I can't believe they told this with a straight face that this is fact, right? Crashed on the, on the ship's deck. The two older benders were killed. I don't think Kate was on it. Were killed um, in the impact. But um, John Bender Jr. with his ginger tash was still alive. But he was mortally wounded. And he confessed on, on the deck of a ship. Like, I'm I'm the bender. In between all the laughing, obviously. <laughs> I'm a bender. And that's why we're in a, our dad built us a hot air balloon. I can't believe they even like trying to say that this is a theory, and that's how they got away, which is so far fetched, and and also I'm pretty sure the plot to the third Mummy film. Well, I was say, how far would a hot air balloon have to travel to the sea from Kansas? It's oh, yeah, it's none landlocked. of it stacks up. That didn't happen. I'm not having that one. <laughs> The house, though, was taken by souvenir hunters, wasn't it? Yeah, murderabilia was big then. And this is before eBay as well. Yeah. So people travelled thousands of miles to come and see the Bender Tavern. And then they took it away brick by brick. Yeah, um, even souvenirs. the bricks in the cellar and the blood-soaked cellar were taken. So now there's just like sort of a hole in the ground yeah. where this Bender place used to be. And people say we're grim for doing this podcast. At least we don't do stuff like that. No. Going around ripping down What's that brick houses? from, though, on your fireplace? Yeah. Mate? <clears throat> That's... Uh, it's never you That's a paperweight, <laughs> that's what that is. Um, but they did find, when they were searching the house originally, um, three hammers that they think were used as murder weapons. And they were given to the Bender Museum, because that was the thing. They were generally like celebrities, this family, because it was this. everyone was like, oh my God, serial killers, before they probably even knew what they were. So there was a Bender Museum that got shut in... Uh, they were given to this museum in 1967... And in 1978, the museum was sort of disbanded because they went, right, we need to build a fire station here. And everyone's like, should we really have a Bender Museum? And they decided not to, so they gave it to Cherrywell Museum, mm-hmm. I think. Cherryville Museum, yeah. Yeah, so they get, and uh, so that was given to them by Leroy Dick's son. <laughs> <laughs> they still um, have a display at Cherryville Museum. Is that the yeah, knife? Yeah. They, yeah, well, no, they have um, a Bender display in there. But Kansas Museum of History have a knife that Colonel York's wife donated, which is you can see on request. It's not on display, but if you go in and say, hey, can I uh, see the knife? Be like, yes, join the queue. Well, I listened to a podcast where it's, it, it's, I think it's that museum that talks about one of their artefacts every time. And then the, they were talking about this because I, yeah. I always search for like whoever we're doing on podcasts so I can hear everything about them. And they were like, "This is um, this is about the bloody benders," and it's so hilarious because compared to us, and they're like, "Obviously, this is you know, it's really grim," and the, and then and then they did a murder, <laughs> and like the way they talk about it is hilarious. And you're like, "Oh yeah, that's how normal people think about yeah. murder." And like all you fucking like weirdos us. listening. <laughs> but they said they're like, "So this is a be- this was thought to be a weapon," and the guy who's it's sort of interviewing the uh, curator. It's like, just sort of looks like a butter knife, doesn't it? She's like, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure it could have been used to cut through it, to be honest. And like, but there is blood on it. And she's like, yeah, no, we think it's blood, but we're not, we're not going to test it. It could, it could be something else. That it's probably something else. So it's basically a shit knife in yeah. a museum. That, there's a reason why you can't see it. And they're wasting everyone's time. <laughs> So that is sort of the benders that they're still um, they pop up in films and yeah. books and things like that. And oh, I, being being a Columbo, one one last thing, <laughs> or one more thing, whatever it is he fucking says, I don't know. Photographs you can have t- those photographs of these crime scenes because it was one of the first incidents where photography was good enough to take pictures, so oh, you can really? actually see some of the. 
pictures of cramps. It's just Victorian men standing next to holes. But yeah, these pointing are with the, metal rods. Yeah, but these are the, the pictures. And there's one guy who looks properly pissed, staggering away. That's just yeah. their mate. It was in the <laughs> in the way of the mob when they went round. Um, that area is meant to be haunted. Of course, mm-hmm. it fucking is. It's known as Hell's Half Acre up there, and it's quite windswept and scary. Anyway, there's meant to be glowing that comes from the cellar at night, and you know screaming and figures that walk around and stuff but I don't know the fuck is up there to yeah. find this stuff out but it's all bullshit isn't it yeah I'd like to go for a mooch there though so if anyone wants to uh, crowd for me to go and have a look please feel free <laughs> I think it would be the most boring thing ever yeah I think it might be as well be like, oh still. this is where the vegetable patch used to be brilliant well they also have um, a like we have a blue plaque here to commemorate where somebody um, has done something or been born some yeah, written a poet book. or something they have one for the benders Jesus a Christ. A historical marker. Come on, Kansas. Yeah. <laughs> isn't that isn't Kansas where um, Superman's from? It's Krypton, isn't it? No. I mean, he went to live in Kansas, didn't he? Did he? Well, we're talking now about, about it all like it's fact and it's bullshit. Well, write in and let us know. <laughs> yeah, okay, don't forget to send us that telegram. I'll tell you what, uh, write it down and then tie it to a rock and throw it in a lake. Yeah. I'll find it. <laughs> Um, so that has been the bloody benders we hope you've enjoyed it that's been quite a fun one hasn't it I've enjoyed this yeah. um, so this is podcast 19 of All Killer No Filler who are we doing next time Rachel can we remember her name Tilly Klimek oh you wrote it down good um, so we decided to do a chick um, because we haven't done one in a while and you know what it's very hard to find an interesting woman generally and as a serial killer yeah that's it um, because they're all fucking baby farmers or, or family poisoners angels of death oh my and god fuck off them. angels of death can't be doing with if you're gonna give me an angel of death shipman then i want numbers yeah i want numbers i don't want your beverly eyelets i don't want no baby farmers it's yawn so basically we're going to be talking about a woman next time so have a happy new year guys or hope yeah. you had one it'll come out after the new year um if you've enjoyed this brilliant can you give us a nice rating on itunes i feel like that makes a difference to something and if you think you know anyone that would enjoy it please do spread the word so this has been all killer no filler with me kira pritchard mclean and rachel Furburn. see ya cheers